So, hi, Yash. Hi, everybody. Uh, very happy to be here. Uh, we have an exciting topic to discuss. Adobe Summit is just over with great announcements. And um, as Adobe Platinum Partners, we have so much uh, at stake with everything Adobe. So uh, let me introduce myself briefly. I'm Oleg. I'm the uh, senior solution consultant for everything Adobe at depth in Europe. And uh, I've been at it for some 20 years, uh, working across creative uh, cloud, document cloud, experience cloud now. Uh, and with me, I have uh, Yash Modi, uh, the CTO of our Adobe practice uh, in Mumbai. Yash, would you like to say a few words about yourself, please? Thank you, Oleg. Hi, everyone. I hope you guys are able to hear me all right. Thank you so much for uh, talking to me today, Oleg. I'm super excited about the Adobe Summit that just happened, and there's lots that we have to talk about. So should we jump right in? And do you want to share your screen, slides with everyone, and take us to the agenda, Oleg? Cool, let me do it. Uh, just a couple of clicks. I hope you can see my screen now, and we can get right into it. Brilliant. Brilliant. I can. Oh. I can. Super. All right, so uh, we are going to have a little recap of something that we found particularly important at Summit, because it's pretty hard to follow the three days of action-packed agenda, but we pick the stuff that is most relevant to our clients, uh, in our view. Then we're going to introduce some of the services we do around um, Adobe Technologies and uh, along the similar lines that Adobe have been announcing. And we're also going to be uh, covering some of the cases of those clients um, to give you a better understanding of what is it that we do and what is the value that we bring as an Adobe partner and as your partner. Then uh, we are going to have a an, an nice interview from Praveen Sadineni, our big friend from Smart Cars, a large client of that and a large client of Adobe Technologies, with whom we've built a pretty great business case. And we're going to get his thinking on uh, the Adobe announcements. And then we're just going to chat along and um, uh, maybe uh, uncover some of the non-obvious uh, things that bring value uh, in our Adobe cooperation between myself and Yash. Uh, does it sound good uh, to you, there? Yash? Shall we proceed? Let's go ahead. Sounds great. Cool. All right, so let's get get into the recap. Uh, and it's going to be a lot of me talking, but I hope, Yash, you can spice it up with your own perspective and uh, the um, experience that you bring uh, running this business for 20 years now. Just before you get started, I want to make sure that everybody knows that we're a big, bad booth at Adobe Summit this year. We were platinum sponsors, and we had a lot of fun interacting with a host of people. And uh, a lot of these learnings that we share today are not just limited to what we what we saw what adobe had to present but also on the sidelines that we spoke to the adobe folks and other people uh, so a lot of a uh, lot of these things are also something that we've derived from our conversations just sort of wanted to bring that up that's so exciting uh, and, and we keep doing it every year right it's one of the best moments in the year the highlight that uh, brings us a little more business There's certainly a lot of value to the companies we work with all right so, uh, one of the biggest uh, buzzwords uh, this year is going to be the content supply chain. Adobe have been mentioning this for a while now, and we certainly have been doing this for a while now, but now it's a proper term, well-defined, with five pillars. So, essentially, Adobe are bringing about the pillar of workflow and playing. Obviously, that's the part of workfront. This is where the process is organized, is run. There are quite a few innovations, and Workfront is on its path to becoming the marketing system of record so that every activity can be started, traced, planned, uh, analyzed. Um, and uh, uh, this is a pretty exciting direction because many companies lack this uh, rigor in running the process, and Workfront, as part of the content supply chain, is becoming a very useful tool um, in that sense. And Adobe sh showed a lot of innovation about this. Then uh, there is the part of which is creation and production. Obviously, with Adobe's heritage in uh, Photoshop's of the world and everything Creative Cloud, uh, creation is a huge part of Adobe's business. And uh, uh, the fact that assets can now be produced at scale, uh, that is a huge addition with tools like, for example, Gen uh, Studio. Because Gen Studio has been mentioned a few times before, but it was never well-defined. 
now it is because Gen Studio is uh, going to be a proper application, a web app, which is going to be the marketer's interface into the whole production process of gener of ordering assets, creating briefs, generating assets uh, themselves, or sending those jobs off to the partners like ourselves. Uh, then organizing all of the marketing uh, world of a brand in a single location, analyzing the outcomes of that work. So that's a pretty exciting um, dimension, and that falls into the creation and production uh, side of things. Also with asset management, uh, it's very important that everything around the content supply chain starts and ends in a place where all of the assets are organized uh, for reuse, for discoverability, and for ease of management uh, with lots of metadata which helps organize the whole process. So that part is there with an integration with AM assets. Uh, the whole process is very smooth. So everything the marketer orders ends up in the same location where they find all the other assets. In, for example, AM assets, uh, digital asset management solution. Then there's obviously the delivery and activation. The fact that the assets go back to the dam is part of the delivery, of course, but then you can immediately activate you as a marketer, I mean. You can activate to all the channels that you manage. For example, if it's a social campaign you want to launch, you can immediately resize all the assets to fit the campaign standards, the destination platform standards as well, and get this uh, process to run on its schedule or immediately you have this control in an app like Gen Studio or uh, in a solution like Workfront where you, where you can uh, start the process and oversee its execution. And lastly, all of this would not make sense if it's only done once. And to do it at scale in a recurring cycle, we have to get those insights and report it. It's very important to see the effect of the campaigns. Uh, in the same solution where you manage the whole thing. So you, you know how your assets perform, you know what to focus on the next time you reorder them, because then you have this feedback loop of what performs and what doesn't, and what's worth the investment or not. So this is largely the announcement around condo supply chain. So yes, uh, can you please uh, say what you think about it and what was the buzz about it at the booth? I, and I love it, right? If you think about it, most of the companies that started their digital transformation five or seven years ago have reached a particular stage where they brought in a beautiful design, they brought in a CMS, they brought in a web analytics tool, they brought in a campaign tool, they brought in some amount of personalization. What is the next step of evolution? It is this, because now with AI coming in, so much of content being generated, uh, content being taken so seriously by most of the organizations, uh, you know, assets people ex assets have exploded, exploded in the last five years, right? Today, and people in the hindsight are, are, are thinking, uh, we wish we would have done a better job of bringing in a, an asset management platform. Uh, omnichannel has been a buzzword for a long time, and people are now finally going truly omnichannel with platforms catching up to being completely omnichannel and delivery and activation, and hence, uh, you know, has become very critical. So, and look at Adobe, they're moving. Uh, you know, they're up, up, upgrading yeah. the campaign part of it. They are bringing the analytics part of it. Insights and reporting are no longer limited to a website, but they now have to bring insights from across customer touch points. So this is the obvious next evolution of a customer lifecycle journey within the organization, within a digital led organization, which is practically every organization in the world today. Right. So, so love the story. Yeah, yeah, and I love the scale. It's a little intimidating, but it's definitely the space that needs organization. And I'm really grateful to Adobe for leading this effort. Cool. Absolutely. So then, yeah, uh, absolutely. Then um, AI uh, is the buzzword. It's, it's funny now speaking to Adobe guys, they even make joke out of it. So we're not going to mention that word until absolutely necessary because it's overused a little. But then it is uh, the thing. Uh, and uh, Firefly uh, is the next evolution of Adobe's AI effort in generative um, uh, artificial intelligence. And Firefly has been with us for more than a year now. And in that time, it has evolved from version 1 to version 2. And now um, we are about to hear the announcement of version 3, the next great step at it. But then everything that was generated with Firefly was generic, not in a bad way, but it's just that it's uh, the common uh, context of the entire <laughs> humanity, everything that Adobe trained their AI on, uh, which was Adobe stock. But then what does a brand do when they want to include their own context? Uh, what does a brand do when they need to include their own products, for example? And then this was the big announcement because now we have custom models with Firefly and a brand can train uh, the generative powers of Adobe with Firefly on their specific examples, on their specific um, 
um, uh, context, like fonts, like uh, products, like color schemes, everything. And the, the process is going to be quite simple. It's uh, it, it's in the process of being rolled out, but still a very big thing, just announced at Summit. And those are the custom models with Firefly. And also Firefly can now be utilized in enterprise pro processes through APIs, because when you want to empower a marketeer, you give them an app. Uh, Express has been this app for a while now, and then in all the creative apps, we could use Firefly functionalities. But when a brand does its thing, it needs scale, and scale comes with an API. So that's what Firefly services are. It's a collection of APIs for Firefly specifically to generate assets, and also to run the related functionalities in apps like Photoshop. Uh, think of, of all those background removals or background replacements. Think of, of all those interesting manipulations of Photoshop layers to create the context that we need to generate assets, assets at scale. All of that is now part of Firefly services. That's a pretty great announcement. Um, now, um, that's not the end of it, because uh, generation, generation of assets is one thing, but then AI has a huge potential to transform the way people work and interact with apps. Adobe are leading this charge with introducing AI as an actual interface to the apps, because think about the large pro, uh, platforms like Adobe Experience Platform, Adobe Journey Optimizer on top of it, Customer Journey Analytics, these kind of apps. Uh, it takes months. Uh, to learn the platform and extract good value of it. But then you can get much quicker to a point where you know what a platform does for you. You, you just don't know how to do it. So in that situation, you as a marketeer are now going to be enabled to ask very direct questions to the apps that you work with and get immediate results. Like, for example, if you're unable to build a particular audience because it, you find it hard to manipulate all the rules, you can ask a chatbot within the Adobe interface, okay, what would be the best uh, audience for me, uh, considering the propensity uh, to turn, or considering the propensity to buy, or uh, that have done a particular sequence of events that I find it hard to build manually. So that kind of interaction is coming to many apps, uh, like Adobe Journey Optimizer, uh, Customer Journey Analytics, and then these are the AI assistants that Adobe is bringing. And also, uh, AI can continue to generate things, but those things don't have to be assets specifically. For example, in Adobe Journey Optimizer, AI is now going to be able to build your entire emails for the audiences that you requested. It's going to build a template, it's going to apply the template, and it's even going to fine tune the wording and the tone of voice um, of the messaging and images in those emails to the particular audiences you request. And the same is coming to AM, the CMS, uh, renowned uh, CMS by Adobe, because then you can generate uh, uh, different variants of content for different audiences. Uh, and that can launch as a test, that can launch as a personalization activity with a few clicks of a button, because the experience is uh, the most tedious part of it is, is going to be built by AI. Uh, yes, did you find anything particularly exciting in that space? Yeah, no, this is, I mean, you, you covered most of it, right? But if you go to think about it, there are so many problems in today's world, for example, content relevance, right? You put some piece of content or a blog today with the ever-changing world, this blog is no longer relevant in six months from now. A lot of figures and facts have changed. So how do you ensure that you have the latest content that is uh, that is available? How do you figure out the missing blocks of content that you have from your storyboard uh, for a customer, for for a customer, right? How do you generate those pieces of content? There are so many additional things in terms of uh, for, uh, giving a simple example, right? Suppose if I'm on a website where I'm buying a car, and if I like dogs, right, or I have a dog, then the entire interface of the uh, that I see could be a car with a dog sitting in it, and 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 you know, narrative about how it is comfortable to travel with a pet, as against if I have. Uh, if if I have a girlfriend, then how how is it easy to go on long drives? If I have kids, then how is it comfortable to carry you know a lot of luggage and and you know how is it safe and so on and so forth? So the whole narrative can now be so contextual to uh, to what the brand wants to represent to the individual who's come to buy it, right? And that's how the real world works. When you go, a sales guy wants to sell you for what you want and not actually for what they have. So I think the whole the, the whole mechanism with which uh, we today see content or we see narr narration narrative on the on the website is going to change dramatically. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm so excited about this because I mean the idea is uh, the idea has been there for quite a while for many years now. but the tooling was missing because how do you put this at scale? How do you identify your segments? How do you create those offers? How do you match them together? Because doing this at scale is a huge effort. It's what we help 
clients with as a company and it's so important that uh, the actual users of adobe platforms and apps are enabled to do it themselves i find it very exciting time absolutely yeah. and um so next one is called unified experimentation uh it's a big word but then what's hiding behind it is a pretty drastic change in the way people experiment First of all, we don't even call this testing anymore. It used to be called the A-B testing, it could be MVT testing, whatever. But then what's behind it is an actual experiment, an ability to get an idea, um, test the idea, and then put into production whatever uh, proves the idea is uh, wrong uh, or right and valuable. So that's proper experimentation as a way of thinking. And uh, the other in the generation of tools was kind of limited in a way like, of course, you could uh, test a web page against a web page. You could make those decisions. You could test a couple of subject lines in an email. But how do you scale that? Can you, for example, test a one recommendation model against another recommendation model? Or can you test uh, the whole uh, sequence of uh, uh, events uh, against something else? Or can you test a channel uh, against the channel? Those are very big questions and pretty hard to, uh, to organize processes. So Adobe is now tackling that. Because, for example, in Adobe Journey Optimize, which is becoming the platform for uh, experimentation, you can um, uh, easily test a channel against a channel, or you can test a, a model against a model. Uh, Adobe is uh, bringing a concept uh, that you can, uh, you should be able to experiment with anything. The object of experimentation uh, now uh, becomes the subject right, of experimentation becomes wider and wider. So whereas you could test uh, pages against pages or emails against emails, that is going away. I mean, it's going to stay there, but now you can expand those horizons and test on a much wider scale. So with AJO, that is becoming part of uh, the whole Adobe Experience platform. It's going to be called Unified Experimentation, and we'll see it develop uh, this year and in the years to come. And there have, of course, been many announcements on the specific apps. It's impossible to follow them all, but we particularly love Adobe Journey Optimizer because we believe it's the future of marketing automation and many more things. And it's built natively on the experience platform, so no more integrations. And we see more and more functionalities from apps like Adobe Campaign, Adobe Marketo, get into Journey Optimizer. And we love it because sitting on native data, it opens up so many opportunities. So now AGO is going to offer the proper B2B edition. That's exactly what's coming from Marketo, utilizing Adobe's experiences. And uh, you will be able to do account-based uh, marketing over time. You can do already a lot of uh, B2B focused work, and uh, this is pretty exciting. Uh, then there's going to be goal-based journeys. You can actually set goals and uh, make sure that you get to those goals rather than run random activities. And then at last, you can mix real-time signals with audience-centric campaigns. Those two used to see it very differently because it takes a change of mindset to understand how you can even combine them, but now you can. So you can catch audiences doing real-time uh, uh, actions and include those reactions to the campaigns that you plan. And lastly, Workfront has been a subject of so many announcements. Uh, we're not going to get into many of them, but then there's a whole planning module coming to Workfront and we recommend that you pay some attention to the announcement in that space because it is going to help you organize everything from resource planning to work planning uh, to project planning, bringing it all together in a very visual way with um, uh, lots of improvements. And uh, yeah. also the reviews are getting an uplift because there's been this controversy whether you review stuff. Do you use Workfront for that or do you use Frame.io for that? And actually Adobe found a way to bring it uh, together consistently. So the Frame.io is used for in-process reviews and Workfront is used more for approval. So when the decision is more or less made, it's now making a lot more sense. And a lot of AI improvements where AI can uh, actually digest briefs and unpack them into actionable items and actionable objects in Workfront, or AI can validate the compliance with your brand uh, through those agents, which look like people who do approvals, but in fact, those are AI bots who take into account all of the uh, provisions in the brand guidelines, for example. So lots of that is uh, making it into Workfront and into Gen Studio workflows because Workfront powers Gen Studio's workflow element, and um, it's a pretty exciting space. Yeah, yeah. But in fact, I was saying that, you know, if I was a company who was starting my digital transformation today, I probably work from is the first product that I would buy rather than anything else. Because now the whole paradigm has flipped on its head, you know. So 
Hey. Yeah, cool. All right, so now uh, what do we actually do with all of those announcements as, a, uh, as an agency, as a partner to many of the world's leading brands? And um, uh, here we're going to mention some of these services that actually may resonate with a lot of Adobe's announcements, but we do it with Adobe uh, clients and not just with Adobe clients. Uh, so there's a lot to unpack here. We won't go into details. I'll just mention some of the things that you might find useful. So yes, we do content supply chain ourselves as well. Uh, and we've been doing this for many years. We've been using Adobe, uh, using Adobe technology, non-Adobe technology, uh, and where we excel is the mass production of assets, bulk production of assets. Something you see on the screen here is an example of what we've done for just it, because we produce thousands of assets a month, uh, supporting hyper-personalization hyper at scale for them. And this is based on a combination of automation, some AI, a, lo a lot of uh, interesting approaches that we do for QA, but in essence, as a client, you're able to brief the concept to us. We develop that concept into a set of automation routines. So in the end, you get uh, thousands of assets that you can pair up with the audiences that you understand or with data-driven um, setups that happen in real time. So all of that is something that we support uh, with a lot of uh, provisions, uh, a lot of flexibility. So whether you need to pre produce 10 assets or 10,000 assets, we're there to support you with Adobe Tech and a lot of custom solutions that we build internally. Then uh, we also uh, like, um, we, we don't like the word CRM, like as in custom relationship measure, because it, it can mean so many things. It can mean huge unwieldy systems and it can mean uh, sales processes. But in, in effect, we like to rather call it life cycle management because when there's a client, uh, we want to welcome that client first, take them through a journey that they came, um, that they go through to achieve their own goals. We want to help them and we want to help the brand build a relationship with them. So life cycle marketing is a much better term for us. And it starts with strategy because the tools are there. There are great tools by Adobe, great tools by other uh, platform vendors. But the problem is that uh, few brands know how to apply those tools and how to actually engage with their audiences. What is an audience? What are the audiences of value? What are the audiences which are not so relevant? When you have your audiences, what do you actually propose to them? What is a relevant offer? What's not? When do you pair them up? So building all those uh, uh, tools, understanding strategies and tactics is something that we excel at. And then when you have a strategy in place, digesting it and putting this in practice on a tool like AGO uh, is uh, becoming a, a much more manageable task. So that's what we like to do and what we like to help clients with. Yeah, and uh, yes, you've been uh, actually building the systems for many years. Uh, is there something you wanna add? Uh, well, you know, the beauty of what we do is that we can step in at any time in the in, in, in a customer's digital transformation process, right? It could be upgrading your overall systems to an omni-channel platform, or it could be taking your current today existing CMS implementation and upscaling, upscaling it to support the content uh, you know, framework that you want to now today take to market, or it could be building additional use cases around uh, we are already have uh, in fact today we can demo customers with llms from different uh, providers and and with their own content and and build a rag model and have it have it all of that within their website and make you know so so it could be reducing operational costs improving efficiencies improving uh, potential customer uh, you know the propensity of customer to buy a product we can step in at every part of the of the Adobe implementation or any in every stage of the digital evolution of the customer, right? So that's that's the that's the whole bit uh, that we would like to really sort of leave here as a message. But uh, I think you're doing a great job. We should we should continue in the conversation on how we are helping across the board. Thanks. So yeah, the next big piece is commerce. Uh, our commerce service is one of the finest commerce services that you'll find, and, and I don't mean it like I don't, I don't, I don't say it. Uh, you know, I say it with all humility that I can, because what we today are capable of doing is, uh, for example, we are, we've already started working on a program called as Commerce 2.0, where we've started bringing about a whole nine yards of 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 processes on how do you optimize your catalog, how do you optimize the ability for a customer to find a particular product, how do you optimize your cart variations, how do you optimize frictionless payment? How do you integrate single click uh, payments? And, and how do you help 
uh, reduce customer drop-offs by bring, uh, bringing right kind of nudge layer and so on and so forth, right? So we do a lot of things in our commerce journey today, which are agnostic to uh, to what kind of business that you run on, on commerce, but which can help you improve engagements with your audiences and improve your overall uh, you know, conversions on that. And, and uh, you know, Oleg, if you remember, you know, previously how commerce used to run in the, there's a very linear part to commerce, right? uh where do you think where do you think the next wave of commerce is going i think it's social everybody's crazy about native in-app uh, purchases in uh, TikTok, instagram and whatnot i feel that is the where the wind blows yeah, and absolutely so just to add to it right imagine if if you hire an instagram uh you know celebrity if they're called as or an influencer sorry <laughs> i'm bad at this social stuff if you hire an instagram uh, influencer how do you well, how about creating a custom storefront which is only geared to showing the products that they want to promote right and that's where i think the variation of commerce is going to start coming into picture right and and commerce is going to get integrated with physical stores in a way like never before so fantastic all right so and then translations i mean yeah, translations are funny because when we work on projects in india we are typically translating in 20 indian languages where the translation service provider may or may not have the, the efficiency in the language that we want to run with. But translations across the globe, as companies sort of become, uh, uh, you know, uh, be, uh, increase their footfall uh, or increase their presence in different regions, translations become extremely important because they can really slow you down, right? And we've done some great work on translations. Oleg, why don't you, you, you tell us about the translation? Yeah, so just recently we pitched to a huge retail uh, client here in the Netherlands where we built, uh, well, designed and in the process of building a system which covers translation from every angle uh, using AI uh, because AI is now a great way to translate. To translate. If you think about LLMs, they just put the words together. That's exactly what translation is. So the quality is really up there, uh, but there are a few challenges and we tackle them. So we organize the process of uh, setting up translations and monitoring the process, setting up the languages, setting up the guard guardrails because a brand needs to speak in its own voice. And uh, you need to confirm with a, a couple of um, uh, limitations that you want to set. So we do that. And then QA is a very important process because uh, as, uh, if you ask uh, AI a couple of times, you get different responses every time. So putting structure into that, uh, putting reviews into that and guardrails and building a process out of it is something we are very proud of. And we can integrate it with AM, we can integrate it with other systems. So I really love where we're going because it used to be the domain of dedicated vendors. Now everybody can do it with AI, but what's the process behind it? I love for that we have it. Absolutely, and and if you if you don't do the translations right, it's going to cost. It, it potentially has has a lot of damage uh, in the future. All right, and uh, one thing that we absolutely excel at and that we've been doing for a long time is to integrate custom AI solutions into Adobe AEM. So today, and we've done it so natively that today, when you go to a text box or when you go to an image box within Adobe AEM and click on a button, you're able to use any AI platform of your choice, be it mid journey, be it a custom LLM that, you've, uh, that you have and, and bring about images or content from any of these platforms very, very natively. Uh, you know, most when our customers use this, uh, this part of our service, the authors don't have to undergo any kind of additional learning. It's just a part of the same native uh, AEM authoring process that they follow. Plus, as Oleg mentioned, our custom LLM integration capabilities, our, our ability to write a, a RAG model, or our ability to optimize uh, existing models with your data allows us to make sure that we are adhering to brand guidelines, where the guardrails are in place, and everything that we do is in line with what your marketing goals are. Like, you want to add something, great? Uh, yeah, so we are exploring this in um, a lot of spaces. So for example, we, uh, for one of our clients, we need to be able to generate um, kids safe content using AI. So that's a perfect example of training, not just on brand guard raised, but on a wider set of rules, which we can bring it to the process. So I love it because AI is so powerful that sometimes uh, you need to put this power into some uh, the limits. So um, uh, I, I love that we have this expertise. Otherwise, it can take a lot of time to explore. So we shorten this time wherever we can. And I love the fact that our customers are throwing such challenges at, at us because if you look at the next point, branded AI bots, that's where uh, you know we are working already working on something very similar where 
customer wants us to facilitate their field sales people to know about the product a little better. So when somebody goes to sell an insurance policy, the person who's selling the insurance policy is not the best person to explain the insurance policy, sadly. So how do they go about making sure that they are aware of all the features, all the caveats that are available, which is there in the documentation, but nobody's reading them. So, so now they have the ability to bring it out. Yeah, and I just love this topic because it's just such a natural evolution because first people focused on building great navigation on their website. Then they realized that the users don't actually want to learn even the best navigation. They just want to get to their answer straight away. So search yeah. became the most important element on the website. And now even search is, is losing relevance because you can ask an actual agent who's going to do a much better job than a search uh, widget. Because for once, you can now bring together the technical content and marketing content that never used to sit on the same website. But a, a chatbot doesn't care. You train it on the entire scope of corporate information. And now people come to a marketing website, ask a technical question. It's not a problem anymore. So and it's not great. Just it's interesting, right? Not just technical questions. But if you look at it, for example, when I, uh, I mean, if I'm hungry in the middle of the night, I don't know what to eat. I can just go to a... Uh, a retail food seller website and say, I get very hungry at midnight. What are my best options for snacking? Yeah. And it's going to start spinning out, throwing out yeah. results for me to choose. Or I, I want to pack seven different meals for seven different days for my kids. You know, mm -hmm. what are my options? It's going to, so the ability for us to have a natural conversation with a brand, because brands are no longer mere experiences, right? They, they essentially have gone way beyond. It's phenomenal. Uh, the next mm -hmm. wave of, of, of all of this, the whole web presence or digital presence of brands are, is so heavily going to be be uh, you know influenced by the conversational ability that they have. It's it's not even a joke anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's amazing. For the first time in history, you can actually talk to a brand that begins to mean something. Yeah. Absolutely. You want to go go ahead? Yeah, all right. So, I mean, uh, this was an overview of something that we do for clients as, a, as an agency. I hope you find this useful. And uh, with that, we can just mention some of those clients. Uh, so, yeah, our um, uh, one of our favorite clients, I mean, every client is a favorite, but uh, somebody we really love to work with, among others, is um, Smart Cars. Uh, it's a company with a in very interesting history. From a br brand, they became a proper company and were about to launch the new uh, car. The car was called hashtag one and it was quite a challenge because uh it it was a new electrical vehicle for a company who did not produce any uh it was a new joint venture so there was no audience um uh, th there was no uh database of users to work with there was no plan on how to do it and we had to help uh, smart develop everything from scratch we had to define the audiences. We had to identify the strategy for finding those audiences. We had to um, do a lot of stuff uh, and actually build up the database from scratch. And we did that uh, with great success. The database was uh, uh, built from zero to 10,000 with very high conversion rates. And uh, uh, Smart is a very happy customer very heavily invested into Adobe technologies. So for example, this was done on AGO, the website is on, on IM, uh, and uh, that's why we love to work with them a lot. And Praveen uh, is our good friend uh, who was just here in Amsterdam a couple of days ago, and we had a chance to uh, record an interview with him. So uh, I'll let him speak for himself now, and then we come back and uh, continue the conversation about the clients. Hi, Praveen. It's always wonderful to have you with us. So thanks for making it once again. Can you tell us a little bit more about Smart as a company? What do you like as a brand, as an organization? We are not a brand, no. We are a small automotive company in itself. Uh, so what, what I like about Smart is the culture. It's quite open. Since it's partly Daimler as well, we do have Daimler culture influence. Plus, it's a startup company, so we have our own kind of mind. So in this context, it's a pretty great, great place to work. And I think our product is also pretty well placed, in my opinion, since we have just started to sell the car last year. So mm -hmm. we, have, we have a long way to go. Mm -hmm. As an automotive company, which sort of rings of established businesses and the startup at heart, as you explained, you are, how do you feel the marketing of Smart is different from the marketing of the other automotive brands, maybe? That's a good question. We have started Smart as just with brand awareness followed mm -hmm. by the product awareness and the sales awareness came afterwards, for example. So we do a lot of investments in, in, you know, in these two spaces, brand awareness. In that context, uh, again, we have a good uh, social media presence. So, uh, we, we are evolving from brand to a kind of OEM per se. This is the message we want to convey mm -hmm. in the initial stages. 
I think it was pretty well received. That's I think that's the difference between the already established company position for us. For us, the focus was more on the brand awareness mm-hmm. and the product to start with. Very cool. That requires you to be very agile. I Is that yes. how you chose uh, Adobe Journey Optimizer as a tool of choice? What we want to do is, again, to achieve this end-to-end, what do you say, user experience. Mm-hmm. You need to have the applications which are in symphony with each other. At that point of time, Adobe was offering different solutions on the different touch points, basically. Mm-hmm. So we thought this would be something which which fits into the vision and strategy of Smart in terms of uh, nice. you know, offering great experiences. Mm-hmm. Actually, you were in a very great position uh, to be chosen from scratch new technology because many more established companies uh, struggle with the legacy technology. A lot of stuff they have to integrate and whatnot. So, uh, AGO is built on the native foundation of Adobe Experience Plasma. So, you have the same data in uh, AGO, in your analytics solution, customer journey analytics. Do you feel you are reaping any benefits of that? Absolutely. From the working modeling perspective, there is no lift and shift of the data from one system to another system. Mm -hmm. So, if the data is available in the Experience Platform, it is ready to use uh, mm-hmm. in the audiences and as well as mm-hmm. further campaigns in, in the journey optimizer. In that context, we have saved a lot of time and the integration, it's, it's pretty pretty useful because I also know campaign classic, campaign standard, and I know the challenges basically there mm-hmm. as well. We were the early adopters for the yeah. journey optimizer. Uh, we have reaped a lot of benefits. We do have a lot of insights. We're also in close collaboration with the product team. They also kind of include the features, what smart needs to their use cases. So in that context, I think we have got a great support mm-hmm. from our product team as well. Have you been following the big announcements coming from Adobe? Did anything in particular strike your interest from what Adobe announced at Summit? I did, especially in the area of uh, AGO being extended in the in the B2B section as well, oh, because yeah. that's the product what we use. That could be the next for us within Smart as well. At the moment, we are completely focused on the B2C. That is one part, and as well as the complete Gen AI part, mm-hmm. how you can kind of, you know, the content velocity, yeah. velocity per se. Uh, I see. Do you see an application for the content at scale, content supply I do. chain? I do. As so well. Smart is uh, it's a new company per se. Still now, we were in the process of setting the processes. Uh, it's kind of more manual. If but if you want to move from the personalization to hyper-personalization, you need to have the content velocity move in the same direction as well. Cool. Do you see the technology being at the same pace as the organization? Because many organizations are challenged with putting such huge processes at scale. I would say we need to, I would say, have an extra space as well to just look into what's the trends, what is happening, what the technology is, is offering us. So I believe that early adopters are the winners. Can you describe your ideal world where agencies like ourselves and brands like yourselves uh, collaborate in the most like fruitful fashion. What would you prefer the brand to keep doing? Where would you like partners to help? Well, the technology is changing rapidly and I believe that whoever adapts to the technology are the winners and we expect uh, Adept being a platinum partner mm-hmm. who will guide us how we can benefit to our use cases and as well as what are the possibilities of use cases which we never thought, basically. So this is mm-hmm. the expectation from the depth. So they are the possible. Absolutely. Yeah, so yeah, this is what it. is our expectation. So within the smart, we have Workfront as, as a tool since, I think, end 2022, uh, but never utilized because mm. you know, we were at the start of our own setting up the platform. But this year, I think we would be focusing mostly on this part to enable, it, firstly, how to automate the processes. Mm. That also includes the content creation process as well. At mm-hmm. the moment, it is pretty manual, pretty tedious, uh, moving mm-hmm. the data from X to Y, the legal is involved, uh, on top of the creation itself, uh, yeah. right? Uh, so I believe that with uh, leveraging the Workfront, which is basically a bridge between, I would say, the creative cloud and the experience cloud, mm-hmm. this is how mm-hmm. I foresee mm-hmm. the content velocity creation and the process can be optimized. I see. That's that's how I look at this end-to-end content supply chain. The workfront is an interesting beast in that it is about continuous learning. Because something that starts as an experiment, parts of it are successful, parts of it are not successful. What's successful can become templatized and used over and over. Absolutely. So you look back at the year of using Workfront and you see yourself polishing up a really nice process which is repeatable, templatable. So we are really excited and hope to be part of your journey in that sense. Yeah. Did anything in particular strike your interest in the way Adobe integrates artificial intelligence and generative AI into the process of content generation? Do you see it being used more for ideation or are you bold enough to actually use it in production? Just recently, we have gone to the North Cape Town, this is how I foresee it, to just have a kind of cool picture for the winter seasonal, yeah. for instance. 
I believe, if mm -hmm. need be, using generative AI yeah. without going to the not cape, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. we can have this content created sitting in the. <laughs> in the, in the that's how I, 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 I at least perceive this. So yeah, yeah. not definitely. Thinking about the plans uh, for the year, especially as influenced by the recent announcements in technology, what is your vision for the year, for your marketing activities, for new directions you're going to take after hearing all the announcements? We would like to optimize the customer journey, which means the right content to the user is important. Um, once we provide this right content, uh, when it falls back into the customer journey, it should be shortened. You know, again, he, the user doesn't have to start again from starting. So this, this enables the user to have his value achieved immediately, which is also a conversion to smart as well. Mm -hmm. Again, all this content velocity, the, the data, mm -hmm. what we have within the platform, everything is mutually inclusive. So this is the vision what we have for this year. This is the basis and long-term bias we would like to venture from the personalization to hyper-personalization because mm -hmm. the spectrum, spectrum is pretty, pretty broad. So hyper-personalization means a lot of content. Do you have a vision for how you're going to be generating offers, something really personal to the people? That is, the data is again, which complements the, the content as well, what we need. So I'm expecting, I'm hoping that we would have a rich data from the user perspective mm -hmm. with, uh, with his engagements. If you see again, it's, it's a company we have just started selling the car. Uh, I'm hoping that we could have uh, good enough rich data coming in, which can be utilized, uh, you know, uh, for an advanced segmentation, which will also help respect to what is a content uh, uh, and offerings. Great. So it's data-driven content, essentially. I would yeah. say yes. Uh, both are uh, both complementary. Right. I, I, I drink to that. Thank you very much. <laughs> but we only have water. <laughs> no problem. Well, thank you. So we are very grateful to Praveen for uh, introducing his views on what Adobe is doing, where the industry is going. And yes, do you want to take us through some other notable client work that we do? Oh, yes, of course. I mean, the, I love what we've done for Smart and it's been, of our, it's been one of our marquee projects. Uh, on the other side of it, we've, we've done a lot of great work around commerce, uh, something like Seat Tires, selling tires online as a proposition, which was preposterous if you, if you look at it five years ago. But mm -hmm. taking them online, bringing in B2B, B2, uh, B2B2C and, uh, you know, B2C workflows into it was was one of those one of those iconic sort of, uh, you know, moments of our life when Seat went live. Apart from that, we've, we've stretched the imagination of what Adobe products can do, right? We've sold credit cards online for IDFC uh, First Bank. We've gone ahead, we've built air, air, uh, airline uh, platforms for Edelweiss Airlines in, in Switzerland. Uh, we've built phenomenal uh, use cases in in uh, especially around BFSI about 10 insurance customers now for whom we do use cases which are not just related to marketing but also operational so we build customer platforms we build their mobile apps we build their uh, insurance purchasing journeys uh, you can actually go and buy an insurance product from a, a pay for it and, and download your policy all of that but built on top of Adobe products today right so our, our experience with Adobe uh, in BFSI, in manufacturing, in uh, retail has been phenomenal. And and that's and, and we have all those use cases on the website. I know we are short of time. So we today for today, would love to, uh, you know, leave you with this. But uh, there are lots and lots of use cases. And me and Oleg are always available for uh, anything that we can help you with. Uh, so Oleg, you want to take us home? Uh, yeah, uh, so we are always happy to hear about your questions. We love solving interesting problems, and that's what we do with the help of Adobe Technologies uh, from year to year to year. So um, happy to answer any of those questions on LinkedIn, uh, in our other channels, uh, wherever you want to engage us. And thank you very much, Yash, for making time in your super busy schedule uh, to make it happen. Uh, and with that, um, I'd like to wrap up. Um, so hit us up on LinkedIn. Um, and uh, let's stay in touch. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks, Oleg. Bye. Thank you. Bye.